Hey, I'm Erica Olson, and on this Music Minute, we are at The Echo with Public Access TV. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here. So let's talk about that name. Why does a band choose the name Public oh, Access TV? Oh, I don't know. Why does any band choose any name? Right? It's got to be a hard decision. It's an easy decision. It just rolls off the tongue. It practically like wasn't even made, that decision. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I had no say in it. No, we just wanted something that would stand out a bit. That's really what it came down to. And I think that it does and it doesn't because it's also something that's a thing already. Mm -hmm. If you could go back and change it, would you? No. Good. I would. Talk about specifically the song you're performing on Music Minute, Shell Number Two. What was that writing process like? So Shell Number Two was the first song, oldest song written for Street Safari. It just kind of was like the melody came from that, came from that, and then it's kind of just about not judging anybody for their past. Well, I saw What's your favorite aspect of the live performance? I like it's kind of its own thing than the record. Yeah. It's separate. It's its own, uh, it's a performance. It's, it's not exactly the album, I and mean, we're playing those songs, but uh, there's four personalities on stage. We think it's pretty lame when you go see a band and it just kind of sounds the same as the album. Together at last, we can make it the past. We can make it last, we can make it last. Well, your debut album was a huge success, but now you're on to your sophomore album. We've got it here, Street Safari. So what was in your head when you went in to make the second album? Was there something you wanted to do differently? Were you like, let's keep doing what we know how to do? Anything that you wanted to change? Not so much change, but a lot. all the songs in the first record were quite old to us, you know? Mm -hmm. And we'd been playing them for a long time, and it had taken a really long time to make the first record, and it was kind of this struggle to even get that first record out. And so by the time we started making this one, it was just like, really had a lot of ideas kind of built up. And then you, it's, it's nice because it's, it's all brand new and it's all really fresh. Like all the ideas are new ideas and not ideas that you're picking from from years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all like brand new of the past year kind of stuff. 
And um, because it was such a mess recording the first album, and then I wanted to have the control of making a cohesive record that was more productionally what I wanted it to be. And um, in contrast with the first one, the first one's kind of more of a live record, okay. and this one's a little bit more of like a studio album. So who does what when you go into the, the studio? Are you all writing together? Is there one person who's doing something different than the other? I kind of demo everything for the most part and then write with Max and then show it to the other guys and kind of learn it and go from there. We're really into demoing before doing anything that's like the real thing. So. There's a lot of like hanging out in a basement and like maybe Max coming down and like hanging out like that and then coming in with Pete and then just kind of, mm, yeah, there's a bit of a process to it, but it's definitely it involves a little bit of locking yourselves away in a little room and just making things on a little eight track before taking it to the next level. What does Street Safari refer to? Street safari. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just for fun. It's just for us. It's kind of the the safari of our everyday lives, I guess, yeah. in, in our homeland. 